in this episode, rest and volume and how it impacts your intensity. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 192 of The Daily Mother Swole, front double bicep for that Monday motivation. Welcome, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. Episode 192, how much rest determines your volume and intensity. So those of you that are just joining me for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Facebook, make sure you click live notifications so you get notified every time I go online. And likewise, make sure your settings on Periscope are turned on so you get that little alert. That way you don't miss a beat when I do any kind of random broadcast here and there, which I do tend to on occasion. Also, Instagram and Snapchat. Snapchat is where I post my daily, you know, step-by-step when I'm posting new videos, when I'm doing stuff new at the gym, when I have new things coming out. And in effect, I will always post on Snapchat and give you alerts also on Instagram. And I also use Instagram stories. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you're watching on YouTube... Of course, I am live on Facebook, and I'm live on Periscope, and the microphone is for SoundCloud and iTunes, so if you commute, if you do the dishes, if you have kids running around, if you mow the lawn, if you're at the gym, you need some motivation, you want to catch up on your Daily Swole, make sure to check out Daily Swole on SoundCloud and iTunes, so you can listen to the podcast every single episode, 192 episodes are on the podcast and on YouTube, so you can watch, you can listen, and the more latest Uh, Daily Swoles have some great picture-in-picture, some workouts, some vlog style. So youtube.com slash Swolenormous for other videos, vlogs, exercise videos, demos, motivation. Got stuff everywhere. If you have a question, just hit me up message or post a comment. So I'll stay for a couple minutes after on the live broadcast and answer any questions. This episode, 192, how much your rest periods determine your volume and intensity. First off, let's define intensity. Intensity is going to be defined as the percentage of your maximum output. Now, this can be translated into resistance, like you're doing one repetition max, or you're going hard, like aerobically, towards your capacity. The percentage is going to determine what your results are. So, for example, if you're lifting less weight and you're lifting less towards your maximum, you could do more repetitions and you'll generally build less muscle if you're getting into like the 20, 25, 30 repetition range, which is why I've always talked about women lifting more weights and guys going heavier. And a couple of the more recent daily swells, I've talked about going heavier and lifting heavier weight to build more muscle for men and females alike. The reason why that's affected by rest periods, and some people sit around and wait too long at the gym and rest, and other people try to go too hard and keep rest periods too minimal when they're doing their circuit, when you're doing CrossFit style workouts, total body workouts. The shorter your rest periods, the less your intensity is going to be anaerobically. And what I mean by that is if you are trying to lift weights, trying to bulk up, trying to build mass, when you are cutting down your rest periods, your body does not replenish those energy stores that allow you to lift heavy weight for a short period of time, such as creatine phosphate, such as heavier strength sets. You might know if you had any experience in the gym, if you do train, let's say you're lifting 100 pounds and you waited 10 seconds after you're done working out, you would lift the same weight and maybe only be able to get another rep or two. Uh, Same thing if you waited maybe 30 seconds, you wouldn't be able to do as many as you did the first set. However, if you rested two, three, four minutes, you may be able to do the same amount of reps as you did for the first set. This is the main reason why people also rest too long, because they don't use a timer, they sit around and they wait until they feel like lifting again. There's also that period of time where it could be too excessive in terms of rest. But cutting the rest down, cutting the rest down, keeping it minimal is great for more aerobic training is great for more endurance style training, but it's not the best for strength training and not always optimal for muscle building. If you're looking for that optimal rep range, if you're looking for that optimal rep range, you should keep your rest periods anywhere between about 30 seconds to two minutes max. You can rest longer up towards that minute and a half, two minutes if you're doing more strength, if you're doing more bodybuilding. Bodybuilding should really be at least a minute and at the most two minutes. 
anytime you're going more powerlifting, more maximum strength sets, let's say you're trying to lift as much as you possibly can, you'll start resting three, four, five, six minutes plus. And if you've ever been to a powerlifting competition or someone who's doing maximum rep testing, you know they wait plenty of time, five, maybe even 10 minutes between sets. And that allows their creatine phosphate stores, their fast glycolytic systems, and all those different processes to replenish mostly creatine phosphate for that high intensity explosive output for that one, two, three repetitions. If you are looking for that hypertrophy range to optimize your muscle building, you should keep your rest, like I said, anywhere between 60 seconds and two minutes, 30 seconds a little bit on the low side, but muscular endurance could be cut down a little bit more, maybe 30 to 60 seconds. It depends on how much mass you're looking to put on. Uh, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, how long should you rest between exercises? Sets and exercise are the same. That's a good question, Mark. Sets and exercise are the same, um, Mark on Periscope. If you, because when you think about it, the last set of one exercise is just the, previ- the, the first set before the next exercise. So you really shouldn't be resting too long between exercise because technically they're just one set after another set. You might want to rest a little bit longer. Let's say you're doing 30 seconds. Let's say you're doing more endurance style training, you're doing 30 seconds between sets. So you're maybe not, might not be lifting as much as you possibly can, but you're working a little bit more your glycolytic system. You're giving your body a little more stress. It's a little bit more endurance for those maybe type one fibers. Between the next exercise, you might want to wait a minute or two minutes just to kind of reset so you can start from the beginning for the next phase of exercises. But if you're trying to keep it more congruent, one set from one exercise is no different than the next set from the next exercise. And that's one of the reasons why if you have any weak points, I encourage you to train them earlier in the workout so you're more replenished. You chart, if you have a, some, a body part that's lagging and you're training it last in your workout, you're going to be more fatigued. Uh, what about rest time for cutting? Really, you want to keep rest more minimal if you're trying to lean out. No one really should be resting more than two minutes. You know, if you're trying to cut, I would keep the rest periods a little bit shorter, maybe 30 seconds to, uh, to a minute. It depends also if you're doing supersets, if you're doing two exercises back to back with no rest, you might want to keep a little bit longer, like 60 seconds between, uh, between your sets. What I would do first is if you wait way too long, if you're already resting way too long, let's say you already rest like two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, and you know it. Don't go any faster than maybe a minute and a half, two minutes to start. Get a stopwatch or get a timer, get one of those little, you know, countdown watches, cheap things at Walmart or something like that, or use your cell phone and get an idea of what you're already resting. So you can look at your watch and be like, wow, that's two minutes already. And then you'll kind of get an idea, wow, I'm resting a long time. And it's just like anything else, because when you are decreasing the rest periods, your body is going through a really dramatic shift because it has to learn to replenish faster in a shorter period of time. It's really optimal anywhere between 60 seconds and, you know, 90 seconds. If you start expanding past that, you're resting too long and it becomes less effective for building muscle. If you go too short, then you affect your body's ability to output greater anaerobic intensity and you're not able to lift as much weight, which can affect your muscle growth as well. I'm not saying you can't build muscle with shorter rest periods. I'm not saying you can't build muscle with longer rest periods. That's absurd. I'm just explaining that there's an optimal zone for everyone. It depends on what weights you're lifting. It depends on how much volume you're doing overall in your workout. If you're only doing four sets, let's say you're just getting into the you're just getting into fitness and you're doing let's say eight sets total for your workout. You don't have to do really short rest and do a 10 minute workout. You can spread it out. You want to pace yourself because if you go too hard, too quick, your body is going to fatigue much too fast and you're going to cause a lot more trauma and you're going to be way too sore after that workout. So rest periods are the same as any kind of volume or any kind of intensity in terms of overload with weights. When you start cutting down rest periods, when you start monitoring and gauging your rest periods, do so slowly and don't just cut down to, okay, no rest this workout. This could be too intense for your body. This could be too much, and your body won't be able to recover, and you're going to overload. You're not going to be able to lift as much weight. You're going to fatigue quicker. You could cramp if you're not hydrated properly. It's just a great difference in acute variable that will throw you off and could potentially really F up your workout in terms of your ability to perform. So bottom line, when you decrease the rest, your anaerobic, your resistance intensity is going to go down. Shorter rest periods, you won't be able to lift this heavy. Makes sense. Exhaustion. Your exhaustion will be a factor. Shorter rest is going to be very taxing. Just like anything else, just like eating smaller meals more frequently, just like 
eating uh, or drinking more water, you will start feeling more thirsty. You will start feeling more hungry. Your body has to adapt to that type of energy store depletion. What makes you feel exhausted now if you train continuously with that rest period, with that shorter rest period? It won't be like that forever. Your body will adapt to it. Your body will get stronger and your body will create more adaptations to handle shorter rest during the workouts. But you have to give it time. So dropping the rest too much and trying to keep that intensity and trying to keep your resistance, what weights you're lifting, uh, your strength outputs the same is going to be very taxing. You're probably going to fail with that because your body is not replenishing those faster energy stores as readily. And you know, you could potentially injure yourself. You could get lightheaded. You could have other issues as a result of your body not being able to replenish just, let's say, blood glucose and elements that you take for granted when you take longer rest periods. So make sure you cut rest periods gradually. That way your body can adapt. Like I say, your body has to adapt and then slower is better than faster and you'll get there within the week. You know, you'll be fine. More aerobic with less rest. If you're trying to build more mass, the shorter the rest period, the less mass you're going to build. Physiologically, your body will be able to lift less weight and that's going to translate into less muscle mass. If you're new to fitness, lifting lighter weights will get you results. But once you start adapting, once your body starts getting stronger, once you start getting that exposure to all these different elements, it takes more consistency and certain physiological overloads for your body to stimulate growth. When you're new to fitness, everything is new, so your body is like, oh, it's under shock, and it's going crazy, and it's trying to adapt to everything, and you see results. That's why a lot of people start a new exercise program, whether it's you know, fucking Zumba, whether it's CrossFit, whether it's any group exercise class, whether it's just going to the gym and lifting things. You'll see results at first, getting on a treadmill, you lose weight, 5, 10 pounds, 15 pounds in the first couple of weeks. You'll see results immediately, and then you'll plateau quickly because your body is getting a new stress, has to adapt, sees a shock, and then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, this is not scary anymore. This is not nothing I need to adapt to anymore. This is too easy. So being consistent with your overload and doing certain things that the human body has been proven to respond to, such as moderate weight, moderate repetitions to failure, like anywhere between six and 15 repetitions in that failure zone, when you're failing between six and 15 repetitions, lifting heavy enough. So you fail in that zone will stimulate more muscle growth. Keeping your rest periods anywhere between 45 seconds or so to a minute and a half will optimize muscle growth. Even if you have to sacrifice strength a little bit, remember muscle size is related to muscle strength, but it's not dependent on muscle strength. You don't have to be able to lift 500 pounds to get bigger. You need to stimulate the body and create this overload on the body in which the muscle fibers are not forced to necessarily push more force, they're forced to get larger. They're forced, the straw is forced to become one of those coffee stir straws to one of those McDonald's milkshake straws. That's what you want. You want the straw to get larger, that cross-sectional area to get larger. If you want to look bigger, you have to lift to get bigger. More weight isn't always the answer. Less rest isn't always the answer. More rest isn't always the answer. The answer is what stimulates the body to respond. And that is generally moderate repetitions, higher volume, rest anywhere between 45 and 90 seconds. And that is just tried and true, tested, tested, tested. And then you can branch off and kind of tweak things here and there and find what works best for you. Diet's important. Rest is important. Hydration is important. The different type of exercise, mixing up your routine is important. It's very simple, but it's complicated. You have to tweak things and adjust for your capacity, but bottom line, the body is going to respond to those acute variables. And the problem is people usually don't do them long enough and consistent enough to see change. You have to do them day in and day out, month, month, year, year, and it'll happen for you. Thank you for joining me for episode 192 of The Daily Swole, How Much Rest Determines Your Volume and Intensity. Thank you for joining me. Let's see what we got. I feel co- I feel everyone overcomplicates everything. No one trains to what they're... Yep, that's it. A lot of people overcomplicate things. You got to train to what your body responds to. It's great to have a starting point. So start with these principles and then branch off from there. So thank you for joining me again every day live at 12 noon Eastern time. Facebook live at Solnormous, Periscope live at Solnormous, YouTube.com slash Solnormous. You can find every episode of The Daily Swole. Make sure you listen to my SoundCloud and iTunes. 
If you watch this live, if you're watching this on YouTube, head on over to SoundCloud, open it up, like the podcast, just give it a like if you already listened to it, uh, show me support on all platforms, and if you haven't already, if you're an iTunes podcast listener, I would really, really appreciate an honest review on iTunes, that really helps exposure, and I would appreciate you promoting the show if you enjoy and you value the material, and those of you that are here every day like warriors, I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Check out my Facebook uh, spotlight video, Just Be You. It's on pinned to the top of my Facebook page. If you haven't already liked it and shared it, take a look. You can inspire someone today. I guarantee it. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Stay motivated. Stay pumped. For those of you that are in premium, I'll see you at 1 p.m. Eastern time, which is probably about half an hour. And for everyone else, check me out on Snap. I'll see you around. And I will definitely see you tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. My other gains. Enjoy your workouts today. Peace.